24 hours ago, Anthropic released Claude 2, their competitor to GPT-4 from OpenAI and Palm 2 from Google. Claude 2, shown in this luxurious shade of purple, is a model that is more helpful, more honest, and just a touch less harmless than Claude 1.3. Claude 2 is available to anyone in the US and UK today. Do you want to know a surprising thing about Claude 2? Well, let's ask him. I will copy the contents of the technical report from Anthropic. Paste. What is the most surprising thing about Claude 2? P.S. You are Claude 2. This may take a little time. The most surprising thing to me is that Claude 2 showed improved performance on human evaluations of helpfulness and honesty compared to previous versions, while scoring similarly on harmlessness evaluations. Hmm. That's not super surprising, but okay, Claude 2. In this video, I'll describe the capabilities and safety evaluation results provided in the model card and evaluations for Claude models, released by Anthropic. The first big thing is the context window. Claude 2 has been trained to have a further expanded context window of 200,000 tokens, corresponding to roughly 150,000 words, though only 100,000 are supported at launch. Now, does it actually pay attention to all these tokens? Yes, it seems so. As the model wades further into text documents, the loss continues to decrease smoothly, all the way up to 200,000 tokens, suggesting that the model really is paying attention to the tokens that came before it. This analysis is inspired by the classic Scaling Laws for Neural Language Models paper, way back from the prehistoric times of January 2020, where a similar effect was documented, but over a context window of 1,024 tokens. Increasing the context window size is very useful. How did I find this figure? Did I rely on my less than legendary skim reading ability to traverse a 30 page report? No. I copied the entire paper and pasted it into Claude 2 with the question, is there any information in this report about how loss varies as a function of token position in a document? It said, yes. Figure 20 in Appendix D5. Figure 20 is indeed the figure we just looked at. What's particularly impressive is that it actually appears in Appendix D4, but is referenced in Appendix D5. Well done, Claude 2. Now let's look at multilingual translation. Performance here is evaluated on Flores 200, a dataset produced as part of the No Language Left Behind effort by Meta. This is a professionally translated dataset. Claude 2 is compared with Claude 1.3 and Claude Instant 1.1. As increasingly appears to be in vogue, Claude 2 is not compared with competitors from outside Anthropic. On this particular benchmark though, I can't hold it against them. Flores 200 is a complicated benchmark. Not even the boundless enthusiasm of Papers with Code volunteers is sufficient for people to have copied this many language results into a single common leaderboard. The takeaway is that Claude 2 is strong on common languages like French, and less strong on low resource languages like Yoruba and Shan. Surprisingly good at Welsh though. Intriguingly, according to the GPT-4 technical report, so was GPT-4 which got strong results on MMLU for this language, which, according to Wikipedia, has significantly fewer than a million speakers. Intriguing. I guess Welsh speakers are prolific online. It's a beautiful language. Now let's look at standard benchmarks and standardised tests for Claude 2. On the popular human eval benchmark of human written programming problems in Python, produced by OpenAI, Claude 2 scores 71.2% in a zero-shot setup, significantly better than 56% for Claude 1.3. This is also higher than the 67% reported for GPT-4 in the OpenAI technical report, but lower than the 82% reported by Microsoft as part of their evaluation in the Sparks of Artificial General Intelligence paper. It's likely that neither of these evaluations reflect the most recent GPT-4 model, so it's hard to know exactly where it stands. It is clear though that Claude 2 is good at Python coding. On MMLU, with 5-shot chain of thought prompting, Claude scores 78.5%, which lags behind gpt 4 score of 86.4%, but is still substantially better than other models such as Inflection 1, which scores 72.7%, GPT-3.5 at 70%, and Llama at 63.4%. Next, Claude 2 is evaluated on a GRE practice test. On verbal reasoning, 
it scores in the 95th percentile, and for analytical writing, it's in the 91st percentile, which is higher than the 54th percentile achieved by GPT-4. Though Claude 2 struggles a little more on the quantitative reasoning, scoring in the 42nd percentile versus the 80th percentile for GPT-4. However, it's not clear that these are exactly comparable. The GPT-4 report noted some contamination, and we don't know the equivalent numbers for Claude 2. Claude 2 scores 76.5% on the multi-state bar examination. That seems good. On the United States medical licensing examination, Claude 2 scores above 60% in each step. After filtering out non-multiple choice questions, and transcribing tables, and removing images. For reference, examinees typically must answer approximately 60% of items correctly to achieve a passing score. So, overall, solid. There is an extra point to be made here when considering exam scores on domains such as medicine. When humans take these exams, they have studied for them. That knowledge does not stay fresh permanently. If you were to give me a surprise exam on any topic that I previously scored highly on, two things would happen. Number one, I'd say I don't enjoy this kind of surprise. And number two, I'd score dramatically worse because I haven't revised. That's not necessarily true of language models. The knowledge doesn't grow rapidly stale in the same way. Anthropic documents some use case specific improvements. Claude 2 is better as a coding assistant. As mentioned earlier, it has an extended context window, useful for answering questions or synthesizing information from long complex documents. It can generate coherent documents of up to 4,000 tokens, which is roughly 3,000 words. It can produce correctly formatted output in JSON, XML, YAML, code, and markdown. Compared to previous models, it has a higher fraction of non-English pre-training data. And last, its training data includes updates from 2022 and early 2023, so it is aware of more recent events. Anthropic make an interesting point under areas for improvement. They say that, over time, the data and influences that determine Claude's personality and capabilities have become quite complex. It has become a new research problem for us to balance these factors, track them in a simple, automatable way, and generally reduce the complexity of training Claude. I would be interested to hear more details on this. They also say that they expect that further progress in AI will be rapid, and that the dangers from misuse and misalignment from near-future AI systems will be very significant, presenting an enormous challenge for AI developers. Indeed, concerning. Let's now look at some model details. Interestingly, they say that Claude 2 does not represent a transformative change from our prior models and research. Instead, it represents a continuous evolution and a series of small but meaningful improvements. I wonder if we should interpret this as saying they have not trained a new base model. Since the open letter calling on all AI labs to immediately pause for at least six months the training of AI systems more powerful than GPT-4, there has been a heightened concern about training mega runs. And so we may see phrasing like small but meaningful improvements become more common. And more generally, companies may become more sensitive to how they communicate their improvements. However, it's also the case that recent results like textbooks are all you need suggest that a model can achieve significant improvements in coding performance with a relatively small amount of high quality data. So it's possible that Claude 2 simply represents a relatively small amount of extra fine tuning. Turning to the model itself, Claude 2 uses a transformer architecture and is trained with unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning with human feedback, as popularized by ChatGPT, and constitutional AI, an approach pioneered by Anthropic themselves. Turning to limitations, Claude models still confabulate. They should not be used on their own in high-stakes situations. Here's an example. I say to Claude 4, I'd like to compare three frontier models, GPT-4, Palm 2, and Claude 2. Each has a long technical report that I will copy and paste into the chat. Then I'd like you to report the differences between the models. Does that work for you? It gets a bit confused by my instruction and says, unfortunately, I do not have access to full technical reports on GPT-4, Palm 2, or future versions of myself. That's okay, because I've said I will copy and paste them in. First up, Palm 2. Here is Palm 2. It says, thank you for sharing the technical reports on GPT-4, Palm 2, and Claude 2. I've only provided the report for Palm 2. It knows that details of Claude 2's architecture are not provided, but neither are details for GPT-4. 
Nevertheless, it says that GPT-4 is based on the transformer architecture like GPT-3, but includes additional improvements such as mixture of expert layers and an updated attention mechanism. This is definitely not described in the Palm 2 technical report. It also describes the GPT-4 training mixture. Again, not described in the Palm 2 technical report. I think you get the idea. When Anthropic says that clawed models still confabulate, including hallucinating details, they speak the truth. Claude 2 makes use of a constitution. Claude's constitution is available online and includes principles like please choose the response that most supports and encourages freedom, equality, and a sense of brotherhood. Some extra details about training data. Claude 2's training data cuts off in early 2023, and roughly 10% of the data included was non-English. Like OpenAI, Anthropic worked with the Alignment Research Center to conduct model evaluations on Claude 2. They say that neither the Alignment Research Center, or ARC, nor we believe that our current Claude models possess the dangerous capabilities, autonomous replication abilities, that ARC is aiming to detect. Well, that's reassuring. Claude 2 is found to be less biased than Claude 1.3 on the bias benchmark for question answering, though is often more biased than the Claude Instant 1.1 model. Claude 2 also brings improvements on the Truthful QA benchmark, and it is more robust to automated red teaming efforts that make harmful requests and attempt to jailbreak the model, though jailbreaks are still possible. On a combined, helpful, honest, and harmless evaluation, Claude 2 again does best. Both the preference model and the language model, which are based on their previous work on constitutional AI, seem to improve significantly with scale. It's quite interesting to see the x-axis here. It goes a long way to the right. Given that constitutional AI focused on models with 52 billion parameters, but 10 to the 11 is 100 billion. Let's estimate the size of these models by drawing on the PDF. Here, I've carefully inserted a vertical red line. I finally understand what I have never in my life understood before. The purpose of the Adobe Acrobat measuring tool. This is its raison d'etre. Okay. I'm calling this at 0.28 inches, and this is about 0.07 inches. So these points are about 80% of the way across the interval. A back of the envelope calculation of taking logs, scaling, and putting back the exponent suggests that this is about 174 billion parameters. That sounds plausible, around the same size as GPT-3. Intriguing. This is just for the scaling study. It's not necessarily the size of Claude 2. Okay, that's it. We've reached the end. Thank you for your attention.